In this video, let us learn about two cavity clistron amplifier. So, what is a two cavity clistron amplifier? It is an amplifier which is used at microwave frequencies. So, why do we have to study it all special? It's because the conventional vacuum tubes, the BJT, the MOSFET, or the FET are not suitable to be used at microwave frequency because of the lead inductance and inter electrode capacitances. And they also have the three limitations. One of them is the inductance and inter-electrode capacitance. Other one is the transit angle effect. Another one is the gain bandwidth product. So here, the second uh, di uh, disadvantage, that is the transit angle effect, is taken care of. So two cavity, isn't it? So what is the cavity? These are the two cavities which we are talking of about in a clistron amplifier. So how, what does this clistron actually mean? Let us try to draw hints from the name. So this word clistron is coined from two words, cluster plus electrons, okay? So what do you mean by a cluster? Cluster means a bunch. So in a two cavity clistron, the factor or the process that is responsible for amplification is the formation of electron bunches. For that, what you have here is, you are having the cathode, okay, you are having a collector. The cathode is negative with respect to the resonant cavity, okay. Then you are having an anode here. So, see, though it is anode, you see it is connected to a negative potential. So, what is it used for? This is called as a focusing anode. Why it is called as a focusing anode? Because it is negative in potential when electron beam is traveling through. Because it is negative, because of the repulsion, they will not be deviating from the focused path. Okay. Then you are having the collector here. The collector is uh, grounded, meaning to say it is at zero potential. So, it actually means that it is at a higher potential when compared to that of your cathode. A little bit of basics about a resonant cavity. So, resonant cavity students, you all know when I say resonance, it means that it is an LC tank circuit. LC tank circuit means the inductance and capacitance are connected in parallel. So, what are the characteristic features of a resonant cavity? So, when a resonant cavity or as a resonant circuit is excited, what happens? It will generate something called as damped oscillations based on this formula fr is equal to 1 by 2 pi root lc now how is that cavity that you have seen in the diagram a short while ago related to this so what is a resonant cavity how l and c can be realized in that let us take the most simpler one so assume that this is a conducting plate you are having a conducting plate below the two conducting plates are uh, separated by a dielectric medium. So, you know that whenever two conducting mediums separated by a dielectric medium, there exists a capacitance. So, in between these two plates, if I connect a piece of wire here. So, what is a wire at microwave frequencies? By now, you know that the ordinary piece of wire which was working or believed to be working like a short circuit at low frequencies now tends to behave like an inductor. So, what I will do here is I will keep connecting such small wires in between these two plates on all the three sides of the plates. Okay, so you are having one capacitance and you are having wires which are connect, connected as inductors. So there you are having a number of combinations of L and C. So when L and C are different, so your resonant frequency is also different. For every combination of L and C, you have a resonant frequency. What I intend to say here or what you should be understanding here is this resonant cavity because it has so many values of L and C it will have so many resonant frequencies that means it works on a large band of frequencies. So this looks like a enclosed uh, rectangular cavity okay. So when this is excited okay when this is excited it tends to generate damped oscillations. So, please understand a cavity resonator is an LC tank circuit, a metallic enclosure at microwave frequencies which when excited will generate uh, damped oscillations. So, short while ago you have seen a resonant cavity with a rectangular cross section but then you see here that it is a dumbbell shaped cross section. 
So what is this cavity and what is the cavity that we just now discussed? This is called as a re-entrant cavity. What is a re-entrant cavity? You see that the boundaries are extending into the interior of the cavity. Now why this geometry is because there is it's with a purpose. So you know the transit angle effect, right? So in the transit angle effect, what is the problem? That the electrons take a longer time to go and reach the anode even before that the voltage has changed. So what is the remedy to this problem? The problem is that the transit time has to be reduced. So to reduce the transit time, you know that the transit time was equal to distance divided by velocity. So, so in order to take care of the transit angle effect, the time has to be reduced. If time has to be reduced, then the distance has to be reduced. So how is the distance reduced? When you compare to this gap, this gap is smaller. So this is why a re-entrant cavity is used which takes care of the transit angle effect which was a limitation of a vacuum tube. So here we have two such re-entrant cavities. Uh, students you have to remember in mind that these two re-entrant re cavities are almost identical in their dimensions. When their dimensions are same, it means that their LNC values are same. If their LNC values are the same, that means the resonant frequencies that they generate will also be the same. So this is an important thing that you have to remember. Now let us look here. So I told you already about the description. There are two cavities, the cathode, the anode, okay, and the focusing anode the resonant cavity or the buncher cavity is positive with respect to the cathode okay so this is a buncher cavity this is the catcher cavity so as the name suggests this cavity is responsible for the bunching process of electrons which i told you in the beginning that a clistron is cluster of electrons or a bunch of electrons so this cavity is responsible for the bunching process and this is going to catch the bunches which are formed after the electrons pass through the bunch cavity. Now let us go ahead and understand how amplification is happening in a two cavity clistron. So when the power supply is turned on, when the DC power supply is turned on, this will be in the order of tens of kilovolts. There is a switching transient. So what is was it what does it mean the moment you turn on the dc power supply there is a sudden change from 0 volts and the voltage has to raise from 0 to 10 kilo volts and this sudden change is sufficient enough to strike the damped oscillations in the buncher cavity and the catcher cavity okay so there will be damped oscillations here and the damped oscillations here as well okay now the signal to be amplified is coupled to the buncher cavity and we should understand here is we can tune the buncher cavity to this frequency which is required to be amplified. So what happens the RF input frequency and the resonant frequency of this will be tuned and will be made in phase with each other. Since these two are identical the damped oscillation that is generated here will also be at the same frequency. Okay. Now let us continue. When once it is turned on electrons are going to be emitted from the heated cathode because of the voltage it gets heated up and the electrons are moving in a continuous manner. So you please observe okay you have three continuous lines here you are having three continuous three lines here but then they are discontinuous okay. So as long as the electrons are traveling from the cathode to the buncher cavity it is a continuous stream of electrons and they are all moving with a uniform velocity V0 because the only voltage that is influencing them is the DC voltage and DC voltage is a constant so the velocity is also a constant. Now when they arrive at this grid so students you might be wondering if it is a grid how electrons will pass through it is a meshed kind of a grid there is a mesh here so electrons will pass through okay so how what happens to the electrons when they pass through why is it that they are becoming discontinuous when compared to the continuous beam just before that so when an rf input is applied you see that that develops as a voltage across this gap so you know it is an RF voltage, you know it is at a microwave frequency, so it keeps alternating with time, isn't it? So for some moment this will be positive, this will be negative and after some time this will be negative and this will be positive. So this keeps alternating. 
So the RF voltage, uh, how it is altering here is, see, if this end, so if the right wall of the resonant cavity is positive, so when the uniform electron beam is arriving here, it sees the positive. So what happens? Because of the positive, it is going to get more, more, the velocity is going to increase. So that means it is getting accelerated. Now look at this. So you know it is alternating so this right wall is becoming negative so when the electron beam arrives here so what happens it is going to get decelerated because it is going to get repelled so electrons are getting decelerated now this situation so when there is no potential difference across it the electrons are going to cross this gap with the uniform velocity with which they started when they were emitted from the cathode so initially the electrons which left the cathode they, and were moving with the uniform velocity, once they cross the gap, because of the influence of the RF field, their velocity is getting changed. So velocity is getting altered. So this concept can be called as velocity modulation. Modulation means to change. Okay. So because of the velocity modulation, what has happened? A continuous stream of electrons is, okay, moving electrons is converted into discontinuous movement of electrons okay so if electrons are moving it means it is correct so a continuous stream okay because of the influence of the rf field is undergoing velocity modulation because of velocity modulation what has happened even the current that is flowing in the drift space is also changing so velocity modulation has resulted in current current modulation Okay, now I'll tell you in another video how these bunches are formed. For now, you understand once they cross the bunch of cavity gap, bunches of electrons are formed. Okay, now it is so designed that when the electrons are going to move like this and come to the catcher cavity, the distance between the two and the applied voltage is so designed that every time an electron is entering the gap, this end that is the right wall is supposed to be is made negative or it becomes negative when the electron bunch enters so you know the charge on the electron bunch okay it is negative when it faces negative what happens the one which has gone undergone velocity modulation and hence current modulation will be retarded because of the negative potential okay so when it is retarded what happens when it is retarded the velocity decreases okay now when velocity is reduced the energy is also reduced how you all know that the electrons which are in movement is having an energy called as half mv naught square this is nothing but the kinetic energy of the electron okay so when retarded velocity reduces so kinetic energy of the electron bunch also reduces and according to the law of conservation of energy this lost energy it cannot go anywhere, isn't it? It cannot be destroyed. That will be taken by the catcher cavity. And what is there in the catcher cavity? In the catcher cavity is present the damped oscillations. And students, please understand that one bunch is formed for one cycle of the microwave. That means the frequency with which the electron bunches are going to enter the a catcher cavity is same as that there is the frequency of the input signal. So every cycle one bunch is coming, it is getting retarded, it is lo losing its kinetic energy and that lo lost kinetic energy is being transferred to the damped oscillations. So as a result what, why a damped oscillation exists because it is losing energy and now you are giving some energy to this damped oscillation. So these damped oscillations will be converted into sustained oscillation and please understand this frequency this frequency and the RF input frequency are the same. So what are you getting? A weak signal is now coming out here as a strengthened signal. Okay, And that's how amplification has happened because of the formation of electron bunches. So once these electron bunches are crossing this after losing their energy, where are they going? They are going to the collector. The collector is at the positive potential and all these electron bunches culminate or they are accepted by the collector. So this is how <coughs> the two cavity clistron works as an amplifier.